Hello, I'm Neha Sahu, Application Specialist for Univar Solutions. And today I have with me two wonderful ladies, Margot Pelta, Junior Application Specialist for Univar Solutions, and Irene Pierno, Junior Application Specialist for Univar Solutions. Today, we will be talking about a bio range of emollients in our portfolio, bioesterides. Bioesterides are multifunctional, eco-friendly esters that are derived from castor. What's more special about it is that it has a negative carbon footprint during its manufacturing process. So let's start with talking about what can we do with it. It's versatile and multifunctional. And these two ladies over here have worked extensively to have these wonderful formulations for us. Let's start with Irene. Irene, how's your experience working with bioslides? So working with Bioslide is actually really easy. I have no problems with the solubility. And first of all, I have a Develop Hair Serum, which actually needs five minutes to be formulated in the lab. Oh, that's great. So you're talking about the Smooth and Silky Hair Serum. Exactly. Correct. So tell us, um, how did you make it more sustainable? So when we are developing the formulations, we are thinking about the product that has been in the market for a while and then we see it contains lots of uh, synthetic ingredients and then we want to enhance that and we want to respond to the market in the way that we develop more sustainable and natural uh, formulation. And therefore we have Smooth and Silky Hair Serum. Can you tell us how you develop it in the lab? So it's a very simple, as I mentioned before, all you need to do is mix the ingredients, which are bioesterides 30, laxville wow, argan oil, olive oil, vitamin E, and lastly, tea tree oil. In five minutes of mixing, you will get your hair serum ready. Indeed, it seems very easy, very nice. And can you maybe show us the sensory of the hair serum? Sure, so we have this uh, clean hair and then we were going to drop some of the products, some of the hair serum on this and we will rub it in. And then after a while, you can see an enhancement of the hair shine and also ease of combing. Oh, that's great. So we can do qualitative and quantitative testings. Uh, let's talk about uh, measurements and uh, qualitative testing for the product. Yes, so our SN Solution Center is equipped with um, Texture Analyzer plus C and it can, uh, we, with that instrument, we can measure the compatibility of hair. So first of all, we are going to need to uh, prepare the hair tresses. So one, for one product, we are going to use six tresses and we will measure uh, the same tress three times. But before measuring, we need to uh, wash it first with our own protocol and then we will let it dry or we can also do a wet measurement and with the instrument it will go down the hair and then it can measure in real time the force it needed to go through the hair and then from there we can get the information such as average combing load or ACL and uh, peak comb load or PCL so with this uh, measurement we can compare the after treatment and before treatment uh, data, and as well as dry and wet measurement. It's so nice to know about the capabilities of the Essence Solution Center. So now let's hear from our colleagues in Houston. Welcome to our beauty and personal care lab at the Houston Solution Center. I'm the technical manager, Claudia Barba. And I'm senior chemist, Bianca Correa. For this kit demonstration, we will analyze the shine and the heat protection provided by the silky serum containing biestolites. To measure shine, we will use the Samba hair equipment. This is a unique device to analyze hair shine, also called hair luster or hair gloss. This is an extensively used in the cosmetic industry to substantiate claims and evaluate products' efficacy. This allows the decomposition of the image seen by a conventional camera or your eye into two images, specular and diffuse. The specular image is formed only by the light reflected by the hair surfaces, from side reflection and back side reflection. The image contains the shine and chroma information. The diffuse image is formed only by the scattered light coming from the inside of the hair. The image also contains the color information. Hair tresses are placed on the cylindrical support. The hair is aligned and combed. The cylinder hair support enables us to measure at the desired angle without moving any part of the device. 
When hair tresses are set up, the polarized camera will take different pictures of the tresses. For this silky serum, we were able to evaluate the hair shine and luster. We will now test the capacity of the silky serum to protect hair when using heating devices. For this experiment, we will prepare hair as we do it at home. Hair tresses will be washed, air blow dried, and finally flat ironed. Flat iron devices can reach temperatures of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. When we finish preparing all the hair tresses, we will give them to our colleagues on the analytical team to evaluate heat protection. Hello, I'm Will McKee, senior chemist in the analytical lab at the Houston Solution Center. We work with every global industry and work collaboratively across disciplines to find the best solutions for our customers' formulation needs. For this heat protection test, hair will be tested using an innovative method via differential scanning calorimetry, which we use to detect the denaturation temperature of the hair. Final results of a silky hair serum formulation showed that bioestylides did provide the desired level of heat protection. Another formulation that we have is the nourishing lip oil. So Margo, tell us what inspired you to make this formulation. So nowadays, when we look into the market, we mostly find lip balm or lipstick with caring effect. Uh, but we wanted to bring a new format, a new texture to the market. And so we decided to develop a lip oil. Um, the main purpose of this lip oil is to moisturize and repair the lips at the same time, but also without bringing a greasy afterfeel on the lips. And so that's why I chose the Bioestylite range, uh, mostly the Bioestylite 1300. Um, that will help solubilizing the pigment because we also want to bring a pigment in the formula so it's more appealing. And the Bioestylite 30 will also be incorporated in the formulation so it can reduce the greasiness of, of it. So that's wonderful. You're combining two different viscosities so that you have an optimum viscosity of the formulation. Yes. Oh, that's great. Can you tell us more about how you formulate it in the lab? Do you have any uh, difficulties and trips and tricks just how to make it? Of course. So first of all, the main ingredient that I said is the Bioestylite 1300. So it will be the first step to incorporate the pigment in the Bioestylite 1300 to solubilize the pigment. Once everything is uh, homogeneous, then you can add uh, the other emollient with the Bioestylite 30. And uh, in this emollient, uh, you also have a butter and a wax. So you have to be careful and um, heat enough the formulation so they can melt. And after that, you begin to cool down the formulation and you can add the other ingredients that are heat sensitive. Oh, so the, the heating process is quite important for this uh, formula. Then. Yeah, it's very important. The butter and the wax has to be perf have to be perfectly melted and the cooling down um, phase is also very important as we don't want recrystallization so it needs to be slowly cooled down and uh, tell us about a little bit about the sensory and how does it uh, look like so once you apply as you can see on the forehand or on the lips you can see that it's very easy to spread and that the bioestylite uh, add a glossy and a shiny effect. Yeah, I can see it's really shiny and glossy. Yeah, it looks very pretty. So apart from this, what other tests can we do? So of course we can do the usual stability test and we can also uh, in the SN Solution Center, we have a sun test, a UV tester. So the sun test uh, XLS plus. Uh, so with this test, uh, you have a UV lamp and also in Essen, we have different glass panels, filters. So it means we can, um, we can uh, check the stability of a sample, like colored sample or non-colored sample, uh, through different glass. So through daylight, outdoor daylight, but also in a store warehouse, for example, and also through glass windows with different thickness. So we have different glass panels in Essen. And uh, on this uh, sun tester, we can also choose 
uh, and select different parameters are as the irradiance control, so the wavelengths, also the duration of the test, um, the temperature at the lamp, so we can do pretty full test here in SN. This is so interesting because here you can actually simulate uh, the shelf life of the product right after it's made into its packaging and also when it's out into the market, when it's sitting on a store shelf or in a warehouse, you can actually simulate those um, environment and see how it affects your product. Yeah. That's very, very interesting. Sunscreens very important during summers but somehow all of us struggle to find the right one so here we have a sunscreen formulation and margot will tell us more about it yes so we wanted to develop a daily sunscreen as uv exposure can affect a lot our body and our skin so it's very important to apply sunscreen daily uh, so what we wanted with this sunscreen is a non-greasy afterfeel and a light afterfeel so people could apply it every day and that apply their makeup afterwards, so it can be buildable. Can you please walk us through about how you formulate that and also which bioacetate ranges do you use? Yes, so first of all, we have a water phase with humectant and also a stabilizing agent. We have to homogenize this phase and heat it to 80 degrees. And we also have uh, an oil phase with the emollient, inorganic and organic filters and also bioestolite. So here we chose the bioestolite 30 because we use organic filters and the bioestolite 30 can disperse easily the organic filters. It also has a light afterfill and um, a non-greasy sensor. Uh, so this oil phase is also heat uh, up to 80 degrees. And we also have um, a non-ionic emulsifying system that will enable the um, emulsification. Um, and so once all, both phases are at 80 degrees, then we emulsify and homogenize the two phases together. And um, we can after add the inorganic UV filter and all, again homogenize. So once everything is cooled down, uh, the preservative and all the other ingredients can be ad added and the pH can be adjusted. Oh, that's nice. But can we also use Biosolite 1300 in the formulation? And did you try using Biosolite in such a formulation? So Biosolite 1300 is, uh, has a higher viscosity and is richer. So uh, we could think that it could, ch that it could change the sensory and have a greasier or richer uh, afterfeel. But because we add a very few quantity and a, a small percentage, then it doesn't change that much the sensory. So indeed, BioSLI 1300 was added in the formula, but mostly for stable properties, stability property. It helps stabilizing the inorganic UV filters uh, as it can disperse it easily, but it doesn't change that much the sensory and we still keep a light and uh, non-greasy afterfeel. I see that we have a sample here. Can you please show us how do you apply it on your skin? Yeah. So you can see here the pickup is very pleasant mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that it's spreadable and that it's easy to, yeah, to spread. It gets absorbed very, easy, very fast in the skin and it leaves um, a soft and velvety feel at the end. Yeah, it's, it's really nice and I can see that you don't have greasiness or any oiliness on your skin. And besides that, SPF is a very important factor while making a sunscreen. And uh, to assess the value of uh, the SPF, we do a collaboration with our labs in Houston. So let's find out more. Finally, we will test the sun protection factor or SPF from a sunscreen. For this test, we will use a sunscreen analyzer, which is a UV spectrophotometer designed and optimized for the determination of SPF value on a variety of sunscreen, reducing in this way for our customers the need and cost for in vivo testing. This equipment will be covering both UVB and UVA spectral regions. The system automatically scans from 290 to 400 nanometers. Liquids, creams, and gels are applied in small dots to the helio plate with a pipette. We then spread the sample. 
The substrate is then placed on the equipment. This equipment selects nine positions when scanning the sample. The stage moves the sample on the holder into the beam of light, takes the measurements, moves to the next position, and continues until all the measurements have been completed. Results and curves are calculated as the average of the nine scans. Recently, we have adapted the method to a powder texture where samples are weighted and spread with a small mesh. Then we spread all the powder over a solvent to bond it to the helioplate. Now let's hear more from the team at our Essence Solution Center. And Hyclus formulations or waterless formulations are such a trend. But when it comes to skin protection, and hydrous formulations can tend to be slightly oily or heavy or greasy because it's completely 100% made of oils or emollients. To negate this, we bring you another formulation, Baby Rash Diaper Cream. Irene, talk us through it. Yes, so when we see the market about baby cream, there are less and less innovation lately. And most of the formulations there are water and oil formulation, which gives actually a very good protection, but the after filling and during the application center is not nice. It tends to be tacky, greasy, and also doesn't spread that easily. So we come up with a new formulation, so we call it Protective Baby Diaper Rash Cream. It's an anhydrous formulation with no water and then we use lots of BioSLI 1300, which is the perfect uh, answer for a natural and sustainable formulation. Can you tell us why it is the perfect answer for it? So BioSLI 1300 is uh, has the highest viscosity of all the bioacetic ranges and also the highest uh, molecular weight. With that, it has a very good uh, film filming property which is perfect to protect the baby's skin and also respect the skin. So I think that for this diaper rash cream, you would have used a lot of powders. Did you face any difficulties in the process? Actually, not really. So while formulating, we will heat up the powders, the waxes alongside with the bio 1300. And then after that, we will cool it down a little bit and then we will add um, zinc oxide. And then after adding zinc oxide, you can see that it will become uh, dispersed well thanks to bio 1300. And then we will uh, optimize that with homogenization process. Uh, for a few minutes and then there you have it, your baby cream. And I'm wondering, how does it look like on the skin? Could you show us? Yeah, sure. So here's the baby cream. When you pick it up, it melts directly to your skin and it's really easy to be picked up. And then when you apply it on your skin, it spreads so very easily and it gives you this a very nice, pleasant uh, sensory and then it absorbs really well and it's non-creasy. That's such a wonderful formulation. I really don't see a white cast, but generally you find with zinc oxide formulations. So with this, we say that we can say that biosolide is such a versatile and multifunctional emollient. You can use it in so various applications such as uh, skin care, hair care, body care, as well as baby care. And I hope you've had a wonderful time learning about our Biosolite range. And if you have questions or queries, please don't hesitate to contact us or your nearest Universe Solutions sales representative. Hello everyone, and welcome to our Q&A session. My name is Rebecca Robinson. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for Beauty and Personal Care. I'm pleased to be with two of my amazing colleagues. I'm here with Claudia Barba and Niha Sahu, and we're gonna answer some of your burning questions for our today's Q&A. So ladies, first question for you. How do you come up with the concept of using BioSlides slides in your formulas? So basically, we've had a, an oncoming trend uh, in Europe where people are going more towards sustainable uh, ingredients, and they also want more claims such as vegan and biostelite portfolio fit 
exactly into these claims. And so uh, came up a concept where we had a lot of customers asking if we had more uh, formulas to share with them with uh, these ranges. And um, we, um, depending on the different areas of Europe, we kind of uh, customized and kind of curated this whole kit around uh, the ask. Okay, great. For North America, it's also a trend concerning uh, this type of uh, emollients, which are pretty uh, nice and uh, with a wide range of uh, viscosities. In North America, it's more about, uh, in this moment, about uh, hair care uh, products. So uh, we um, were working uh, like uh, in collaboration with Niha in order to do all the characterization, especially for the hair products. Great. And why do you enjoy working with these ingredients so much? What makes them so great? Uh, the whole range in, in general is, is very versatile and uh, biostalides, we use it in all of our labs, whether it be in uh, the US, here in EMEA or in the LATAM. So, and each region has their own characteristic, characteristic and specific um, um, qualities to look for. So I think uh, for us, uh, the main focus was Sanke. Uh, we have a lot of focus on Sanke and biostalides are a great medium to kind of uh, help disperse mineral pigments as well as the uh, inorganic, uh, inorganic pigments. So they, they are very, very easy to use, versatile, nice textures. You can uh, play from very fluid to very thick textures. And so uh, it was very nice uh, seeing that this range can actually give you everything uh, in terms of uh, textures. From our side in the Houston Solutions Center, uh, we have uh, some nice equipment that uh, we uh, make try to uh, use them to help uh, the SN lab in order to do all the characterizations. So it was more also like uh, using these nice ingredients, but also try to uh, help and to support all the uh, properties and claims that we can do uh, for this type of products. What I uh, really enjoyed uh, working uh, with uh, Niha and also uh, with the SN lab, it was also like uh, learning a lot about our clients worldwide. This is more for our European clients, but of course uh, we were uh, supporting these claims with our with our uh, old equipments that we have in the lab. Wonderful. And what about the sensory profile? So biostalides, they have various grades. So starting, uh, if we talk about biostalide thirty, it's very light and uh, it's it's uh, it gives you a dry sensation a dry feeling and uh, if you compare it to the biostalide 1300 they are uh, very rich and gives you a very luxurious um, feel so it's a um, you can have as light as possible to as rich as possible so uh, this uh, helps in terms of maintaining an emollient uh, cascade into the formulation where you start feeling that it's light enough but the moisturization carries throughout. So um, it's it, you can mix and match and um, you can have all uh, the range. So very light to very rich. So depending on which grade you choose from the best light. In the lab in North America, we have been using the light uh, viscosity product where it's very nice uh, to use it for hair uh, serums or hair uh, products very shiny and very easy to use. And it's not uh, very oily, so it's very uh, versatile and very good uh, for uh, hair uh, products. And last question, ladies, how does bioestylide compare to and contribute to the baby care segment? Actually, I think bioestylide fits very nicely into the baby care segment, especially when we talk about, um, say, diaperage formulations or, say, very heavy uh, kind of products where you have a lot of powder material into it. And um, usually what we see is very greasy uh, products, but because... Uh, 
of the grade of the bias cloud that we've used, it, it, it's easily spreadable. It's not tacky. It's not very oily, but it provides a very nice, um, even film uh, onto the skin when applied. And I think it's um, for a baby care application, this fits right into where you want to have protection as well as a little bit of sensory so that, you know, everything is nice, smooth, non, like it's not, not sticky um, and it doesn't really, um, you don't feel very icky while using it. So it's it's a very nice, uh, versatile product. And um, you, I mean, you, the sensorial attributes that it gives uh, actually wants you to keep it using again and again. I'd like to try some of that out for my two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, I guess that we can extend this application not only for baby care, but also for uh, sunscreen or all type of uh, skincare lotions or uh, creams, because some of the products are very light and very, uh, as Annie had mentioned, are very uh, film forming. So it's uh, very nice to, to um, include it in some of the skincare products. Excellent. So overall, super versatile, um, nice feel, texture, one of those products that you just want to use in probably every prototype that you make, right? Exactly. exactly. They are uh, very shine, versatile, uh, a pretty uh, nice range of uh, viscosities and um, very nice, uh, well done for the heat protection test for hairstyle. So on hair products, so we are very nice and versatile. Wonderful. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate the presentation. We really enjoyed listening to the answers to some of your top questions. And um, if anyone in the audience has any questions, please feel free to reach out to your beauty and care specialist. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care, everyone. Bye.